Hey y'all, uh, Rochelle here, your delightful crafter. As promised, um, I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna do both. I'm gonna do one of the uh, boxes from the Pandora gift box, gift box set. And I decided to do um, the tree. Well, I'm calling it a tree, but it doesn't have to be. Like I mentioned in the last video, if you turn it upside down and change it up a bit, you can make it a cute like Easter carrot, you know, something like that. But, um, yeah, so I've, I've pre-cut everything that I'm going to share with you. Um, there's more embellishments that I'm probably going to do, but I'm going to do them off camera. And then probably next weekend, I'll like, I'll post a finished picture of it on the community page. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I am going to kind of discuss a little bit of the, the die cutting because some people aren't familiar with how the tonic dies work. I mean, a die is a die, right? But if you're new to crafting, it can be confusing. Anywho, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope you stick around to spell. If you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. Ding that bell next door if you want to get notifications of my future videos. Thumbs up, likes, are always appreciated. And any questions or comments, please leave them down below. So, as mentioned, um, I've already pre-cut everything that I'm going to share on camera um, tonight. And... Um, and then a few other things that you can do. Um, but there... I will, I always go kind of, I don't want to say elaborate, but I do like lots of detail in my projects. So this is just basic and then I'm going to discuss some things that you can do, but I'm not going to demonstrate it if that makes sense. Anywho, um, Tonic recently had their, uh, what they call their Pandora's gift box bundle and it was two different shape. So this one, obviously you can make it a Christmas tree, whatever you want. And then this one, they call the Enchanted Favor Box. And this is the one that I was, that drew me to the bundle. Because I was like, oh, what an awkward shaped box. And uh, maybe next weekend, I might do this one as well. We'll have to see about that. But it came with both of these, and then it came with this add-on uh, set. Uh, because this one doesn't have, like, Christmas decorations, but this one does. And um, in it, you've got these bits that kind of cut out, and it looks like, um, like Christmas lights and ornaments. And then... Uh, and it also comes in like the teardrop shape and then in the for the other box this one it's kind of like going with like the silver bells theme here of course you don't have to do silver bells but um that's what i think of when i see those anywho so i'm gonna put this one away this one here you are going to cut for the bottom and the top, two of these and two of these, which I've already pre-cut. That is uh, your base I've done in red, and then your top I've done in white. Because I was trying, I, I didn't want to make it like traditional, like Christmas looking, you know, like red and green or whatever. And I, I added a little bit of white in there. Then you have your decorative layers. There's a bunch of ways that you can use them, but... I already have some items preset for you, or to sh not for you, but I had preset for myself for cutting. So when you're cutting your layering pieces, they don't, it's not just a die that cuts this whole piece. This is actually two dies. You have this one here, which is your base. So you can cut just this out to create a like a, a solid background. Then to get this piece that you're going to have like inlays, you're going to layer them together and it's, I'm really, um, let me get something here. So if you're looking at it, I'm hoping it picks up. You kind of, I kind of get like on top and look down and I try to make sure the spacing is the same all the way around. And then once I have it, I put the washi tape down to um, secure everything the way I want it to be 
and onto the paper because um, I have a, the magnetic platform and so if you don't the dies can move around uh, anywho so I did um, the layers with the top piece and then for the 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 part that holds your goodies inside I've only um, done one layer here and I've left these inlays in for a reason to talk about something else that you can do and maybe um, who knows maybe next weekend I'll play with play around with it and share some uh, it, like inlay techniques because um, I do love paper piecing and um, for this one if you wanted to change it up and uh, you could cut the solid background and then inlay different colors if you choose or you can cut out multiple colors of like just oh, I guess it's shutting down sorry I'm always listening um, to some crime story whenever I'm recording these. Hopefully, well, it's not working. Well, that sucks. Oh, well. Um, or you can cut out multiple colors of this particular die so that you can fussy cut out uh, different ornament, like different colored ornaments to add on top for some more layering, which I love to layer. Anywho, we are going to get to the assembly. I am um, one thing I always do is I like to score all or f um, fold all of the score lines on my projects first. Then I like to uh, adhere everything while the project is flat, if possible, because it's really hard to secure them well when you have the project. Um, Put together and you can't you know like use a solid surface so we're just gonna score all these little guys here fold them um, if you want you can go ahead take a bone folder um, I am a I love these um, are these a silicone I can't know I think these are the uh, I can't remember what these are called. Unfortunately, these are expensive bone folders, but I love them. I have them in three sizes, but on my desk right now, I only have two of the sizes. I've got this one, which I call the medium, and then here's the really big one. They come even bigger. You just have to kind of search for them, and then there are smaller ones as well. Uh, this is the size I use the most. Anywho, I'm going to get to scoring. Um... Come on. This is going to be your hard one. It's okay, though. All right. So this one's good to go. This one is good to go. And with these, I, I, I like to um, fold them both ways. Just so that they um, work a little easier for you. And then this one is, there we go. Ah, this is the pain in the Patukas one. There we go. So there's that. All right, so there's the two bottom pieces. Then this one's the easy one because there's no weird... Um, weird folds on them. Okay. And then my earbud d just died, so it's really weird for me not having anything talking into my ear. <laughs> um, I've been. I always like to uh, listen to or watch uh, documentaries on the Tudors, um, the Boleyns, you know, that kind of time frame. Um, then let's see what Band of Brothers is playing. It's like Marathon this weekend. So we've been watching that, which I enjoy. Again, because y'all know I love 
World War II, one, two, history, Korean, Vietnam. Um, I'm really big into following the history on those. I'm a big believer that if you don't teach it or learn it, we're doomed to repeat it. And um, yeah, this one is being stubborn. Okay. All right. So come on. All righty then. So now we're going to go to assembly. I'm going to do the bottom first. So with this one, um, like I left these in in case you want to go for that look, just to share it with you. Uh, but I wanted to, I couldn't decide if I wanted the foil part underneath or if I wanted it on top. And as you can see, we're going to go with it on top. Come on. I was trying to look at the patterns to figure out if I can do like um, Halloween. Uh, but the only thing I could really think of was to cut these bits out and then um, layer them like white, orange, yellow um, to get like the candy corn look. But I, I decided against it just because. So, also, I am not affiliated. If you're new to my channel, I'm not affiliated with Tonic at all. Um, I'm just a big, big fan of their dyes. They have, to me, probably some of the best dyes on the market. Don't get me wrong. I love spell binders, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, yeah. All righty. These, are, these ones are really easy because you just pop them on top of each other, line them up, and I have a little bit of glue bleed, but that's okay because um, the tonic glue um, dries clear, and it's trying to offset, and I don't want that. Okay, we're getting... Well, we were for a little bit getting some really nasty rain. So if you can see what I'm going for. So that is the top. And I'm I'm probably what I'm going to do is cut out more of these. Um, I'm going to try and do it with scraps so I don't waste. I don't like to waste paper. And then um, do different colored uh, ornaments on here to pop off. So probably some gold. Um, obviously red, silver, I, I, I don't know yet, but so anyway, so there is that and we're going to go ahead and finish these up. Um, <clears throat> I went to HEB, which is the main grocery chain here in Texas and, uh, I'm notorious for this. I, and this time I actually <laughs> had a shopping list. And I got everything on my shopping list, but of course I got more. I went for milk, pizza crust. I'm doing barbecue chicken pizza tonight as soon as I finish this video. And fortunately, I have already uh, prepped everything, so all I have to do is assemble it and throw it in the oven. Let me tell you, it is the easiest pizza to make. Well, technically it is. And it's a hit, at least in our house it's a hit. Um, so we, when I do pizza at home and I make it from home, um, we prefer the Boboli pizza crust and I like to get the Boboli thin, uh, just cause I don't like lots of extra bread and dough. Um, and we get, we pick up two of those is pretty good for our family. And, um, I get chicken breast. I did this yesterday cause, uh, yesterday, uh, no, I did it Thursday because it's been a chicken weekend. One, is that one? Yeah, one, two, three. Those are good. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm multitasking here, trying to share a recipe and assemble. It takes it takes concentration. Uh, anywho, um, 
And see, you know, you don't even have to do the background. You could just uh, do that and that would make a pretty one as well. Cause you know, if you like, I like to have like the ceramic tree. So like I have a dark green one, a light green one. I have the white, well actually I'm looking, I'm looking for a vintage, um, the white ones, you know, that, that Hobby Lobby is now like mimicking the ones from the seventies and early eighties. I want a pretty white one. Anyway, back to assembly. Um, and the pizza. So then uh, you can use whatever barbecue sauce you want, but in our house, we, on this particular pizza, we prefer um, Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. And so, oh, back to the chicken. I'm all over the place, aren't I? Sorry. But, and you know, because I'm, I'm like Doug on the, you know, the movie Up Squirrel. Um, I get my chicken breast, I parboil it so it's uh, fresh garlic, fresh onion, salt, pepper, and garlic salt. And I throw all my chicken breast in there. Um, and when I do it, I usually do like a giant package because um, after it's cooked and done, um, I have a, I love Pampered Chef. And I used to sell it a long time ago. Um, but they have a, they, I think they call it their salad thing, but I use it strictly, in our house, it's strictly for shredding up chicken. So once the chicken's done, I, I run it through this chopper and um, it's all shredded. And then I get like my gallon uh, freezer bag and I just put all the shredded chicken and you can... Um, because I knew all my recipes this weekend were chicken, so it worked out great. And I made homemade chicken quesadillas. And then last night was a chicken and broccoli braid. That is a tried and true, one of the most popular Pampered Chef recipes out there. And uh, my husband asked for it. <laughs> he doesn't ask for things very often. But it's, I don't make it all the time. Anywho, um, back to the pizza. And then I make it with Monterey Jack cheese. And um, you get your pizza crust, you put it down. And I do like a swirl of barbecue sauce and then I take the back of a spoon and put it on thin. Then I put a little bit of the shredded Monterey Jack cheese down, not a lot. Um, I usually use, uh, between two pizzas, I use three 10 ounce blocks of Monterey Jack cheese when I am making these. But this time around, I just bought the pre-shredded because I wasn't feeling the, the shredding. Um, wasn't particularly my cup of tea today. All right, we're going to get, oh, see, I knew I should have put a weight on these. Uh, anywho, back to the pizza. Um, so then you put a little bit of cheese and then you put your chicken down and then a big, huge swirl of barbecue sauce on top and then the rest of your cheese. And then you throw it in the oven for, I think with Bobbly it is... 13 minutes and then it comes out and it's done it is so good guys um and it's great leftovers too um, sometimes i'll make an extra pizza just so that uh, my husband and i can take it for lunch <laughs> so all right so it's hard for me to do it because i can't put my head down over the top of this and it's not even but it'll be okay uh, sometimes I keep um, a heavy block just so I can make sure it stays on there because it's a lot of layers. Anywho. And yeah, and that's it. Super easy and it's it has always been a hit in our house. So um, if I were putting more effort into it, I would add more glue on the back just because... I like glue. It doesn't have to have it, but uh, oh, looks like I'm doing okay with the alignment. Get back 
there. Okay. All right. Again, again, again. All right, so there's one part of it. The most tedious part of this sucker is all the die cutting. And I would say I would probably beat my head against the desk if I was making a ton of these for a party. Um, that or I would just have to have multiple die, die cut machines and multiple um, sets of these dies and have do like a chain. Have some of us uh, cutting a bunch of these. Otherwise, it's, it would take you forever. The prep just for this this little bit was at least 45 minutes. Um, you know, getting my paper together, cutting everything out. Um, okay, do that. So the die the die cutting of this one is a pain. But I think it would be a big hit, especially if you were, um, you know, doing like a office party or something like that, you know. The only thing I didn't, darn it, I didn't get was ribbon. Um, I should have grabbed a ribbon, darn it. I think I'm already liking it. I think I'm liking this. And the cool thing is, is these boxes are actually going to be a fairly decent size. Alright, so there's that. And then... We're, we're coming down on the home stretch here, y'all. Actually, I'll just go ahead and pop them all out. Now, um, I kept these as much together as possible just so I could discuss like the inlay and the paper piecing. Um, if I were to do that, though, I would, I wouldn't do it so much with the, you know, my foiled paper. Um, just because it's so much more expensive, unless I'm using scraps and just like making sure it's under certain parts of the die. Um, so, and um, I, I like to, um, I always try to make the most frugal cuts. So I try to rotate the dies um, so that I'm not wasting paper so I can get the most out of my paper. Granted, y'all know how much paper I've got, so it shouldn't make a difference, but still the same. I, I do like to try and get the most out of what I have. Um, and if you're new to my channel, yes, I talk. I'm a talker. Um, I like to talk to you guys as if I'm talking to a friend or family. Honestly, it just makes it easier for me and less weird, I think. All right. This one I wasn't gonna go all out on just because the bulk of it is gonna be hiding underneath anyway. Um, and then this die also has and I didn't cut it out because I didn't see the point because it's going to be facing down anyway. There is, for this area here, you even have decorative dies here to uh, decorate on the bottom if you want to. But with that one, you only have one choice. Uh, you don't have multiple choices for the bottom. I To this one, I'm excited, except for the heart because I'm not a big heart person. This one, I would try to go in like an art deco route with that that's what I see when I look at that particular die anywho back to putting this thing together I got started later than I wanted um because I wasn't didn't plan on being at HEB as long as I was today but Anyone who's ever been to one know that it's almost impossible to walk into an H-E-B and just walk right out. Um, 
Uh, if you're from the Southeast, H-E-B to me kind of reminds me of Publix. And I, man, do I miss Publix. Um, yeah, I really miss Publix. All right, so there's one. And um, I'll show you how to put that together in just a second. And I think with this one, I would probably... Um, if I wasn't making a ton of them, I would probably do some paper piecing as well as far as adding different colors to the ornaments. No! Oh. Sorry, it fell in my lap. All right. Doo, 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 doo. It is so dark outside. As I was prepping the cutting for this, um, it almost sounded like, a f I mean, it was crazy. Our, we have a massive, massive oak tree in our front yard. And, um, oh, those who are wondering, we still don't have grass. They still have not installed our grass. They promised to call me last Monday. Not a peep. Again, um, this is supposedly a very reputable company here in the San Antonio area. And I will tell you, it is ABC Home and Commercial Services. And again, I will never hire them again. Um, ever. They have well over, you know, they, you know, they say you have to put half down. We paid well over half of uh, the cost for this project that we contracted with them for. And the only thing they have done is they've come and they've scalped our yard, made it look horrendous, and lay down some um, slate paver stones, and that's it. Um, and this should have been done in June. This project should have been done in June, and we're coming up... I I'll be surprised if it's in by the end of this month. All right, so for the base, let's move all that out of the way. All right, you're gonna take one and you're gonna layer them like that. Once you get all the decorating done, this is a really easy thing to put together. It is not even, oh darn it, I don't like that. A really easy project to put together. Also, make sure that you're using the same size. This is a textured weave, so you've got texture on one side and it's smoother on the other. So just make sure when you are doing all your folding and all that fun stuff that you've got the right sides going together or it's going to look really, really weird. All right. Oh, yeah, that looks really good. Come on. Okay. Okay. All right, so the next the next part, so you're gonna take these two tabs here. And you're just gonna add a little bit of adhesive there, a little bit of adhesive there. Um, and then you are going to make sure your score line um, matches with this side. You don't want it flush flush because then it's not going to want to fold very well. Um, there we go. Alrighty. So we're going to leave that there. And this is even, e this is even easier. It's not even funny. I was trying to decide if I wanted to go with just a solid green top and then like a brown cardstock on the bottom with the gold, but um, yeah, I wasn't feeling it. This one, just uh, lay it down, put it, to put it together along the score lines and hold it. Like I said, I, I normally, I'm like 
head straight down on top as I do these. All right. And then this one. Uh, get on there. It's being, this one's being a little stubborn. I could have put more glue on these and I didn't. And I kind of wish I had. All right. Next. Yeah, I think this would be really pretty with um, pieced on um, ornaments. You know, like they did here. I really think that is cute. Cute, cute, cute. This one should work a little better. Okay. But yeah, if I were, um, well not if, because I will. When I go to cut um, these pieces here, I'm going to use scraps and just put them, you know, kind of align them up underneath the die just so I'm, I'm using up, um, scrap paper and I'm not wasting paper. All right. Look, kind of looks like a heart. And this one, uh, this is where I would, I don't think I have, yeah, this is a good, actually I think these little ones are going to be better. I keep these little gator clips in my desk and it can hold. I don't want a big one. I guess I'll go with this. Mm, I guess I'm going to go with the big one. I have to be careful because this is foil. These, these are going to leave marks on uh, the foil, which is a, a no-no. All right, so while that's doing its thing, you, really easy, you just pull it up like that, and that's where the ribbon comes into play. You're gonna run ribbon or twine, and, um, you know, uh, uh, to hold it shut. Actually, you don't have to, um, but, uh, that's what the holes are there for, so that you can run ribbon through it and hold it shut so the surprise is on the inside. And I think this is going to be okay now. All right. And then these guys here. Okay. Got to pay attention to the bottom so that they line up with these guys. And, you know, so it doesn't just fall out the bottom of your... of the tree these little guys pop in those little holes right there and hold everything inside and I don't know for some reason I was thinking more of it which <laughs> on the bottom but I guess not because it looks like they've got it sitting on a little pedestal here I guess I was thinking it was going to pop up more but I mean you have your Christmas colors um I think these are adorable and it's really solid as well. Um, even if I don't like this together, I can still make other pieces to coordinate with these. Um, but I think that is cute. Again, um, you could just go with the solid um, back here and layer it. So um, you would have your candy corn look, you know. You can also do it in shades of orange. And then here, um, I would probably cut out three of these bases and then keep one of the squares, just cut it out to line on the inside and then uh, cut a hole here and cut strips of green 
paper to look like you know the tops of a carrot run it through glue it down and then take the the square the square that I cut out lay it on the inside so it hides where you have inserted the leaves for the carrot bit and I think that would be absolutely stinking adorable again you don't have to use these bits and bobs um, you can just use um, boy, these pieces right here because uh, you have your choice of a stitched edge and then there's another one in the project or in the die set that doesn't have a stitched edge it's just a straight a straight die cut edge if that makes I hope that made sense Anywho, there it is. Like I said, um, I mean, look at that. Look how that would pop if I cut out uh, ornaments in different colors to adhere on there. I think I'll do that this week. And then uh, there's even this piece here. Uh, this piece here, I think what I would do is I would trace the die and manually cut it out because this this circle I would actually um, try and turn it into a star so the star is on the top of the tree and um, yeah but anywho yeah I think that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna show a finished uh, version of this next weekend um, also, uh, next weekend, I should be able to give you the update. I have Friday, I have a consult with the orthopedic surgeon for my knee. So we will see what happens with that. Any hoo ha. Um, that's as much as I'm doing today because I got to go get dinner done. And um, with that, questions or comments, as always, leave them down below. Uh, or feel free to shoot me an email, which is down at the bottom of the my description of every video and um yeah love you guys to pieces hope you have a fantastic rest of your week as always happy crafting bye bye